bless you, Sister Sharon, and I want to give you five signs to look for, the counterfeiting of the Holy Spirit. In this 21st century church, we have so much going on, especially in the charismatic churches, dealing with false apostles, false prophets, and the counterfeiting of the comforter. The Bible tells us in 1 John that we are not to believe every spirit, but to try the spirit to see that it is of God. We are to test the spirit. Jesus said in John chapter 4, verse 1 through 5, that God would send the comforter and that he would lead and guide us into all truth. Please, my friend, read 1 John chapter 4 for yourself. The work of the Holy Spirit is twofold and they go together. The Holy Spirit is here to lead the follower into all truth. Truth, Jesus said in John chapter 17, will make you free. And this is the battle for the soul. Wherever we yield the soul, the psyche, that person, be it self, Satan, or God, will have dominion over the soul of man. The Holy Spirit comes to empower the believer to overcome the snares of the enemy that primarily work through darkness, ignorance, not having knowledge, not having light. Where Jesus is, there is truth. There is peace. He is the Prince of Peace. The twin of peace is truth. Any area of your life that you cannot find peace, there is a lack of truth and understanding. The scriptures tell us through the preacher named Solomon, in all thy getting, get understanding. The Holy Spirit comes to give us understanding beyond our years, beyond our own meditations, beyond things that we could ever just conjure up. He will speak and give the believer understanding and insight to things we do not know of. We don't even know how this stuff comes to us. And it's like, wow, I knew that. The Holy Spirit is the communicator of heaven. He, his job is to correct us direct us, and primarily to comfort us. And part of the comforting of the Holy Spirit is allowing you and I to settle down when we are going through tests, trials, and tribulations, and to hold on to the truth of the matter when he tells us, think it not strange when these fiery trials come to test your faith as though something strange is happening to you. The Holy Spirit is going to bring these truths to you that whatever you're going through, your neighbor's going through the same thing, and you can settle down and trust that the Lord knows the way that you take. So what is happening, my friend, because of these, there's so many things going on. I just want to give you five of my own observations that are very simple and most of us are going to relate to them. But I want you to understand how serious these things are because there are people who are very intellectual. They do not have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. So when they come to churches, especially charismatic churches, where they're practicing a lot of laying on of hands and speaking in tongues and prophesying, and these are these are legitimate things that the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit gives uh, uh, administrations of gifts, uh, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, speaking in tongues, miracles, healings. These are true manifestations of the Holy Spirit. But there are so many people that are being cut off, turned off, because when they come to these churches, there's so much outward expressions that have really nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. Let me start by giving you these five things to take a look at. If, you're, if you are a pastor, if you are a ministry gift, and you find yourself leading out people, and you are charismatic, you are gifted, uh, you are familiar with the working of the Holy Spirit... And let me say this, my friend, because the Holy Spirit's primary primary work in the believer is to real, reveal truth. When we come into corporate worship, it must be in 
decent and in order so that the spirit of truth can have his way to speak because man shall not live by bread alone but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of god so when you're in a charismatic uh, church especially if you are hurting and, and you're in pain what god will send you is a word because man shall not live by bread alone in other words we're not sustained through fleshly earthly uh appetite but by the word so when prophetic utterance words of wisdom and knowledge is muzzled or there's so much chaos going on a person is so turned off they can't even sit long enough to receive it because they're they're looking at 20 people that them fell out under the power of god on the floor let me let me go into these five signs friends because some of this it is not of God. It is carnal. It is fleshy. It's not of Christ. And because pastors are not teaching, rebuking, and correcting as we ought to, I'm not a pastor, but as a servant of Jesus, I'm concerned because I know so many people who have tried to, quote, receive the Holy Spirit because they don't understand the Holy Spirit is in you, but moving in the gifts of the Spirit and the manifestations of the Spirit is something different. Number one, let's go in and look at these five very common counterfeits of the Holy Spirit. The most popular is the laying on of hands and people falling out on the floor. Now, for me, I've been walking with Jesus since I was 21 years old. I immediately began to do street ministry. Um, the Bible says, do the work of an evangelist that your ministry be proven by evangelism. So I've been doing evangelistic outreach my whole 28 years. And when you're yielded to Holy Spirit, you will find that there are people that you will end up praying for that have demon spirits. You're praying, they're, they're burdened. And I have never in all of my 28 years of outreach in my community, in my region, wherever I go, have I ever witnessed any person that I've prayed for, that I've asked God to deliver them from demonic uh, oppression or, or uh, possession? Have I never seen one of them hit the concrete? I've never seen one time that I needed a catcher, nor did I need a cloth to cover them because they hit the floor out in public. Friend, this behavior is carnal. And it brings reproach on the most intelligent person on the planet, the Holy Spirit. When we're in corporate worship, we are there to receive instruction. We're like, we're soldiers of the Lord. We're not there to be uh, indulging in, in, in all of this outward expression of flesh. We are there to hear what thus saith the Lord and does the Holy Spirit want to speak. When people fall out on the floor and they're laying on the floor, people who are very Im immature in their growth with Christ, who are babies, who may be trying to find and understand this whole thing, these people are totally turned off. They're, they think you're crazy. Oh, yeah, they do. They think people that carry on like that you're crazy. But there is no biblical support for this constant passing out on the floor. And my observation coming from a Pentecostal background is that all the people that went to my former church, they, the ones that constantly, constantly went up there every week, week after week, right? I'm like, what is going, really? I mean, how many devils you got? You shouldn't even have the devil in you if you're a follower. What did you keep going up there for? And my observation is that many of them were very mentally unstable, they were constantly on the floor getting up every week. Same group of people. It's as if our pastors were practicing on these people, casting devils out every week. My friends, this is confusion. And it is not of God. When you see a person throw something, wave something, and a whole group of people hit the floor, the question is begged to answer. Did Jesus behave in such a way? Do we see any New Testament servant of Christ, a disciple or apostle behaving in such a way? My friend, there is nothing to support this behavior. It's a counterfeit. Because if the Holy Spirit is present and the person is administering the laying out of hands and you get back up off the floor, go back out into the seven days before you come back the next uh, Sunday and you right back where you were, 
This is the laying on of hands of men. My friends, it is a counterfeit. When someone lays their hands on you, don't feel intimidated that you got to fall to appease that man or that woman. Don't do that. But my friend, understand the Holy Spirit is here to give you strength, wisdom, and power to overcome. And, and, and going back and forth, up and down, he's trying to get you up to walk straight and narrow. He don't want you down and out. He wants you up and at it. Number two, uncontrollable dancing, violent movement. When the preacher's ready to bring forth the word and you have people still flying around the church and all this kind of like very bucking and friend, that's flesh. That's not the Holy Spirit. Don't let nobody trick you. That's not the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not saying that you can't feel a certain kind of way and want to dance because the Bible says David danced. He was a king. There is a place for dance. But when you are in corporate worship, you should be orderly. When the music stop, you stop. If you going on and on, something's wrong because you need to each of us act accordingly in a corporate setting you're not there to draw attention to yourself you're not that taken up by the music and if you are you need to grow up because you're too old for that you're drawing attention to yourself but rest assured my friend it is not the holy spirit Number three, uncontrollable screaming and shouting, especially after the preacher has moved on. That's not ever the Holy Spirit because he's respectful to himself. And if the Spirit of God is in the messenger that's bringing the word of the Lord, begins to speak, why would the Holy Spirit be standing five rows back screaming and shouting and disrupting? That's either an immature person that needs to be rebuked from the pulpit to sit down or they need to be moved off to the side and them devils cast out. Don't ever mistake it, friend. That's not the Holy Spirit. Number four, there, I've been in meetings where the people are doing uncontrollable laughter, barking like a dog, all types of strange, just strange stuff. Listen, my friend, remember, the Holy Spirit is here to reveal truth. Truth is what sets you free. Okay, praise and worship has its place. But if you're not free in your mind, in your heart, and Jesus is not indwelling, you could dance, 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 dance. You're not going to be able to break those chains because your heart and your mind still belongs to Satan. You have to come into the house of worship strictly to worship unto God. And when you begin to do these manifestations, like I said, barking, uncontrollable laughter, my friend, that's not the Holy Spirit. Don't let nobody trick you. And now we see this, this movement of uh, people just shaking their head like something's wrong with them, like they got ticks or something. There is a spirit called Kondalini, a Kondalini spirit. It's a, it's a devilish spirit. It's, not a, it's an unclean spirit. Friend, do not partake of that. The Lord has a fruit of his spirit called self-control. And when you are out of control and that person seemingly has something possessing and you thinking it's the Holy Spirit, it's not. That person need delivered. My friend, do not partake. And if you are a pastor and you're participating, my friend, and all these people in your congregation are depressed, they don't have the joy of the Lord, we need to all go to the altar and ask for forgiveness because we have been deceived by this counterfeit spirit. It's not Holy Spirit. Last but not least, speaking in tongues. Listen, friends, if you are in a church and they're constantly speaking in tongues and there's no interpretation, that is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is orderly. And when you, I don't care who it is, if they are speaking in tongues without interpretation, they are out of order. When you go to a service and they're saying, everybody who's, who, speaks in your heavenly, uh, who speaks in tongues, speak now in your heavenly language. That is not the Holy Spirit. We do not tell the Holy Spirit when to speak, how to speak through us. Just the same as we cannot prophesy when we want to. God has gifted me in the gift of prophetic utterance, words of wisdom and knowledge. He gives them to me all the time. And oftentimes, it's, it's not in a church setting. It's everywhere I'm going. I'm yielded to him. And at any time, he could be revealing secrets and things to tell strangers. That's how I've always known him to work in my life. Friend, when you are constantly speaking in tongues just like that, that's not him. That's you. Because if you study 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the scriptures tell us very clearly 
very clear. The Holy Spirit manifests or gives the gifts as he wills. In other words, as he sees fit for the moment. I've been in meetings um, where after I finish exhorting the word of the Lord, the spirit of prophecy, word of wisdom and knowledge will come upon me. I've been in churches where right after I finished these exhortations and we're praying for the people, that anointing came to just words of wisdom, just flooding my soul. Every person standing there, God, I knew who, where they were, where they were, and where they were going. Because in that moment, the Holy Spirit wanted to edify and bring comfort to all of these people in this particular church. I'll never forget it. Stood there, me and my two ministry partners, for almost six to seven hours straight. Words of wisdom, words of knowledge. I can I wish I could conjure that up. I wish, but it doesn't work like that, my friend. We are his servants. And if you are in meetings where everybody's just speaking in tongues and laying hands, don't participate because witches love these types of churches because through the laying on of hands, you have given them permission. The Bible says, let no man lay their hands on you suddenly, lest you be a partaker of their sin. So my friend, you don't let no anybody lay their hands on you, especially if they're speaking in unknown tongues and there is no interpretation. Oh no, my friend, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because friends, the floodgate is open. All types of error and wickedness is going on in these houses called God's house. Oh no, my friend. Mm -mm. You can't participate. Last but not least, the Holy Spirit. He is a communicator. He is the communicator of heaven. And if you want to know the measure of the Holy Spirit working in a ministry, in a man, in a prophet, in an evangelist, pastor, teacher, in yourself, in a friend, where is the testimony of Jesus Christ? That's that's how you will know the, the person, who they really are, and if the Holy Spirit and the so-called gifts they're working are authentic because the Holy Spirit, wherever he is, Jesus is lifted. And the truth, who was the Christ, will set you free. My God, I give him all the glory, my friend, because in this moment, I must tell you, lift Jesus higher. Lift Jesus higher. Look for the testimony of Jesus. Any, quote, miracle signs and wonders, dismiss if Jesus is not in the midst. They are counterfeit. God bless you, my friend. There will be more teachings coming forth concerning the Holy Spirit. God bless.